Hey there, this needs Beautiful and today we are making some leather shoulder armor. As always, print out the pattern, get in the size that is fitting for you, cut away the edges, tape it together and cut it out. I recommend making a paper and cupboard model like this one first. Transfer the edges on your leather and cut it out. You want to use 3.5mm wedge tanned leather, which is around 9 oz. In addition to the pieces on the pattern, we also need a strap for the attachment on the arm. Moisten your leather pieces from both sides, let it set for a few minutes and then transfer all the other lines from the pattern on the leather. When the leather is mostly dry but still cool on the touch, you can start with our swivel knife, polish it up and get some lines in. When all lines are done, we can use our bubbler to get in some deep impression along these lines. With the groove cutter reversed, I mark the parallel lines to the edge for the borderline stamping. With the bone fur, I a little bit deepen the impression to make this beveling easier, and I don't need a super knife for it. For the border stamps I go with a viking knot work like all pieces of this set. With a ruler and a swivel knife I get in some used look, some cut marks and I also use a natural stone to get in some rough texture. And this is how your pieces may look like now. Please note that these artworks are fairly high in detail and need some skill and experience to get them looking nice. Next we can bevel all the edges that will stand for themselves. Simply with a brush and some leather dye I paint the border of the pieces brown, then put on a coat of resist and use the moisture of the resist to burnish the edges. Then I put on another coat of the same dye and tap away some of the dye to get in some nice dark texture. When everything is completely dry, you can put on some antique gel to get into the deep cuts and cracks and wipe away all the excess. I like to put on two coats at least to make sure that there's enough dye in every crack. After a few hours of drying I put on another coat of resist to protect it. I transfer from the pattern to the base piece the line where to punch the holes for the edge weaving and transfer all the holes on the leather and then punch them. The weaving technique is relatively simple, but you want to test it first to make sure that you get it right. We start with our lace going in the hole, creating a loop going through the loop from left to right but underneath the strap that we are using. Then we pull it through. Close the first loop 
and then we close the second loop. When your lace is running out, you want to start early weaving in another piece of lace and then just switch from the old one to the new one and keep on going. To shape our pieces, we want to moisten them from the back side and then bend them into the shape they should be. Next we want to position them onto each other, clamp them in position and use a pen to mark the area underneath and then we rough this up so the glue will stick easier. Use contact cement and put it on both sides and let it dry for a few minutes until it's not sticky anymore. Then you can just press them together. Make sure the positioning is fitting first and then in this case start from the middle and press it down on the outsides and hammer it together. Punching now the sewing holes is a little bit tedious but you will manage it and after that you can just sew all the pieces together. This will make sure that it's super strong and basically indestructible. Cut away any excess on the leather, then sandpaper this edge, bevel it, re-dye it and polish it. Next you want to punch some round holes for the attachment on the flash side. For these I use backpack straps, but you can use any very strong flexible material. Punch the holes along the strap and check with your pieces if they fit together. You really want to make sure that they hold tight to each other, like in the pictures you will see later. And this way you make sure they are in the perfect position. But before you set the rivets, Put them in loosely and make sure they really fit and everything is as it is meant to be. To attach it to your arm you need a strap like mentioned in the beginning. Put on a buckle and some round holes and then use the rivets to put it on the lowest piece of your armor. The attachment system of this shoulder armor uses a female and a male piece and with a buckle you can just rivet it on the highest piece of the armor and then attach it to the strap of the male piece to attach it to your chest plate or whatever you are wearing. And that's it. You do the very same thing on the other side of the shoulder armor. Just mirrored and with a little bit different artwork. But apart from that, it's exactly the same. Depending on what you are attaching the shoulder armor to, you want to make sure that this male-female system works there as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like, subscribe, Check out my other videos, also my patterns in my shop and see you guys next time. Have a great day!